Nard out here showing how Yakinder plays a rampant A site on Vertigo CT side. Yakinder was ranked number 9 in terms of HLTV ratings on CT side Vertigo. You see from these stats, there are some good, and then there are some poor areas. And that's based off his aggressive and unique playstyles, which I'll be analyzing. But before I get into the breakdown, here's a word from my sponsor, GG Predict. If you play CSGO, you gotta try ggpredict.io. It's a training platform to analyze and better understand how you play and what mistakes you make during your Counter-Strike matches. Then, effectively train those aspects that need improvement. You can use it to improve literally every aspect of your game. Team play, nades, pace of your game, or your aim. It not only analyzes your game in so many aspects, but also lets you train on the platform thanks to personalized training plans. How? GG Predict's AI knows exactly what you need to do to become a better player. Each week, you automatically get tailor-made trainings made by the best CSGO athletes who work with GG Predict. It's easy and fun, and you can train right on GGP servers and get all the data from your trainings analyzed. Simply connect your Steam, Faceit, or Esportal account and get your matches instantly analyzed by GG Predict. We almost forgot, if you're playing just for fun, that's great too. You'll love our social features which allow you to compare with your friends and finally check who really is carrying the team. First, I'll be showing some rounds where Verse Pro start 3A. Their initial setup towards ramp early on reflects on what kind of spawns Yekinder and or Jame has. In this round, neither have a good spawn for early pushes or peaks. Yekinder flashes ramp for any early aggression from the T's. Kicker is sandbags there to support Yekinder and Jame picks up yellow. Miles don't throw any ramp nades early on and Yekinder doesn't have to worry about any aggression from this. He does have to worry about the bottom ramp boost on each side. The single most effective thing he can do is spray the smoke which he finds a kill onto Dexter. No presence from Mouse Ramp and Kick It rotates off, however, he gets told to come back. Yekinder mollies bottom right corner and then Jane peeks off of it. Yekinder falls back and likes to hold this platform angle behind Crane to peek ramp. This angle is strong in the sense that it's an off angle and it allows him to fall back to site quickly. Now, you can imagine ramp in a sense like Banana on Inferno. Most of the time when CTs take ramp, they'll just leave one player and rotate the others. In this round, VP anticipate the ramp retake and want to contest it. Mouse will throw the Lurk smoke and Yekinder throws a deep ramp smoke and sprays the smoke. Jame is there towards Ivy peeking down yellow and Kicker is behind him with a flash and molly if need be. Jame doesn't see anyone push through and Yekinder's aggressive playstyle pushes him into bottom yellow and holds. There is action towards stairs and Yekinder immediately starts to flank. He kills Frozen and afterwards will find the kill onto Rops. By playing in a really forward position like this, alongside Yekinder's aggressive playstyle, it enables him for fast flanks. Similar comparison is when you watch a kinder on CT side Inferno towards Banana, there will be a couple of rounds where he's logs or brum, and he will flank mid and A, and it's the same here with ramp. That early ramp flash thrown from your kinder is pretty standard flash that he throws most of the rounds. It's good in buying NET offers going for the hold onto platform, which unfortunately for your kinder after flashing, he tries to get into the platform peak and gets killed blind from Shiro. Before I go back into more 3A setups, let's look at the platform peak. After securing ramp control, Yekinder falls back to the platform peak. He is left solo A while Kicker rotates off. This angle allows Yekinder to get info as well as to take the fights from an off angle and it also allows him a quicker way to fall back rather than jump spotting from sandbags. When playing this angle, he does have to worry about the T's crossing to the right wall, which he does check and gets 2 kills before falling back to top default, where he does a lot of damage to shield ramp before dying. With Yekinder's playstyle, he's always looking to take a duel and he puts himself in positions to do so with that platform angle and top default position. Another position to be wary of when playing this angle is a lurk smoke to yellow, which in Tropic throw early on, Yekinder waits to see if anyone pushes up and then Krad does after Yekinder stops holding it and gets killed. Another benefit of the platform angle is the early info you can get which Yekinder spots multiple players and then falls back and nades off Crane. However, Yekinder's aggressive and unique playstyle comes into play here where he holds this off angle out of nowhere. Most players will see them falling back, but Yekinder is looking to take the fight. Mouse will fall back and Yekinder pushes to get info, even though Mouse are on a low buy, and Yekinder gets killed by Frozen, which is a con with Yekinder's playstyle. He puts his team at a disadvantage when he dies here, leaving them in a 4v5. This is why Yekinder's KAST is poor, which stands for percentage of rounds in which the player either had a kill, assist, survived, or was traded. His aggressive playstyle here, when it doesn't work out, will have a huge impact on this value. But when it does work out, his impact score will shoot through the roof, which is based off multi-kills, 
opening kills and clutches. Two rounds later, Miles and a half by, and same exact situation happens after peeking from platform, gets early info, falls back into this off angle out in the open position where he gets one kill and then instantly traded. You see Yukinder has a lot of freedom on this team to be in positions like this and to be this aggressive. Any other player, you see them fall back to site and play retake. Back to the 3A ramp setup, Shame has to spawn to go platform to peak ramp where he's going to kill your liege and he doesn't spot anyone cross the yellow. Yakinder behind him throws a ramp flash off yellow. Kicker is in the back supporting. Seeing how Jame didn't spot anyone cross the yellow, Yakinder doesn't have to worry about it. This time around we see a ramp smoke from the T's. You could deal with the smoke by mauling behind it as well as spraying it, which you see Yakinder do here alongside Kicker. Yakinder will re-smoke ramp and he pushes down to bottom yellow where Grim throws ramp retake nades, however no one comes out with them. So being in this forward position allows Yakinder to get a lot of info knowing that this is just a fake. His teammates can rotate towards mid and B to prepare for the hit. Yakinder proceeds to flank and VP shut down the B take from Team Liquid. Here is another round of the 3A sub where Mouse will contest ramp early on. Jame will go towards Ivy but first Molly's mid yellow to delay any fast yellow push since he does get smoked out by Mouse. Yakinder and Kicker will go towards ramp with Yakinder flashing off yellow. Miles will throw a top ramp smoke in Molly. Yakinder goes on the back platform and nades behind the smoke which does a lot of damage onto the Miles players and he spams the smoke alongside Kicker and they get 2 kills. Yakinder is going to re-smoke deep ramp and Kicker rotates off. Jame peeks down yellow with his op and action towards B which causes the rotations leaving Jame solo ramp. Yakinder does rotate towards mid, I'm not going to show the rest of the clip here. One occurrence you might run into as a ramp player is that teams will sometimes flash a player through their top ramp smoke. If you're playing back platform, this can be an issue if you get caught by the flash because you won't have any cover to fall back to. In this round here, we're going to see it happen to Yakinder as he's playing back platform and he gets flash and he has no cover and gets killed. Kicker also gets flash and he's unable to trade, however he's able to fall back. To give him some cover while playing back platform, Yakinder will sometimes throw this smoke that will do so, but it also acts as a one-way smoke. In this round, we don't really get to see the smoke in play here as it fades when Yakinder makes contact with the T's. When it comes to lower buys from the enemy team, Yakinder gets much more confident in his peaks as you saw before with the open off angle he was in when the other team was with a half buy. He's always looking for the duels knowing he has the better rifle. The next 3 A setup involves Yakinder pushing down yellow and then once after their first ramp smoke fades, they set up for the deep ramp control which consists of smoking off the bridge, mauling the box and flashing Yakinder through. Team Liquid will throw a molly to try to delay Yakinder and then they contest it. Yakinder pushes down and kills two players before being traded. When pushing down yellow, you want the best spawn as well as you're going to disrespect the T's IV smoke if there is one. If there aren't any ramp nades thrown early on by the T's, then you won't need a flash to push down, which happens here against Gambit. Gambit threw an ivy smoke from the start, but not any ramp nades, meaning no one crossed the yellow. Once down yellow in this clip here, he kinder plays behind the T's ramp smoke and peeks over it, killing Daphne. Sometimes he will wait behind the smoke for any T's to push through to yellow. Unfortunately for him, he isn't able to fall back. When your kinder re aggros, his teammates threw a bad flash and he peeks into two players and dies. However, if you hear ramp nades being thrown early on and there's an ivy smoke, then you're playing with the devil if you push through the smoke without any flashes, which happens here in this clip with Yakinder coming through the smoke and getting punished for doing so without any flash assistance. In this clip, ivy smoke and ramp nades were thrown by complexity. Yakinder pushes through the smoke, however the flash comes from his teammates one second late and he gets killed by config. In this next clip, when Liquid threw ramp retake nades, VP players fall back to A. They're gonna go into this 3A CT setup where Yakinder is in this off angle top Tetris behind the beam, Jame is opping Ivy, and Kicker is default. It's an angle that's not commonly checked by the T's, especially when their attention will be towards Kicker and Jame. However, we don't get to see the angle in play here as Yakinder gives it up, and then he gets on top of default using Kicker's smoke as a one way, and him and his teammates shut down the A take from Team Liquid. Next up, let's take a look at some protocols and setups with two players towards A at the start. In this clip, it's Yakinder and Kicker. Yakinder flashes ramp, peeks from platform, and Apex smokes it off. Yakinder sets up to throw this molly for bottom yellow, which will push Apex up yellow. Kicker has sandbags and flashes for him to peak yellow, where he gets a kill into Apex. Yakinder will re-smoke ramp, trades out for the AK, and Kicker rotates in mid as Yakinder has ramp control. I'm not going to show the rest of the round here as Vitality execute B. This time around we have Jame with Yakinder. Jame is going to push through the ivy smoke and peek down yellow while Yakinder covers his ramp. 
Shame kills Alex Yellow while Yakinder kills David coming through the ramp smoke. Shame leaves Yakinder to solo ramp until Yakinder jump spots sandbags and spots a player. Yakinder falls back short where Jame flashes Ivy for him to peek. Yakinder kills Mopez and then smokes it. He peeks after the smoke knowing that there could be a player that pushes through the smoke and he kills deaths. Then Yakinder being Yakinder will hunt for the last kill, however it gets killed. This is the type of plays I want to see more of Yakinder VP with the teamwork from him and Jame and not just Yakinder YOLO pushing. Now Jame is going to go for the peek from platform and Yakinder will support Jame as he does so which he flashes after Jame peeks. Yakinder makes his way across from back platform and checks yellow, he doesn't spot anyone and he kills Dexter on the sandbag then sprays through the smoke killing Acor. Had the flash wasn't misthrown then Yakinder most likely dies here. Jame in the meantime went back around to Ivy after getting the initial pick. Yakinder falls back to sandbags and Mouse end up going towards B which I'm going to skip the rest of the round here. In this round Yakinder is going to full swing ramp as Jame is carving his yellow near Crane. Yakinder gets good damage onto Nico and Jame through the mid yellow molly which does a lot of damage to Nexa as he pushes all the way up to try to flank Yakinder. However Jame is there to cover him and kills him. Both players fall back. G2 show ramp presence throwing default nades and VP are going to re-aggress here with Yakinder mauling ramp and Jame throwing the one-way smoke and flashing. Yakinder pushes the sandbags and Jame gets killed from short, Yakinder also dies. VP were in a 5v4 and could have easily played retake seeing the utility they had left however this is their playstyle with Yakinder re-aggressing no matter the advantage they have which as you see hurts them here as both A players fall. Yakinder with the best A spawn does the same move he did in the prior clip where he dry swings ramp. He gets good info that no one has pushed ramp as he is able to peak ramp prior to the T smoke blooming. Yakinder pushes through the smoke to bottom yellow and he doesn't spot anyone. Kick it rotates off and Yakinder is aware of T's liking to go through the smoke towards the left side here where he kills Nico doing so. He falls back top ramp and G2 go to B. Yakinder does the same play here once again pushing ramp with no utility, Jame will molly his mid yellow, Yakinder doesn't respect the T's smoke and he pushes through and he doesn't spot anyone. Him and Jame will set up to try to take deep ramp control however G2 molly him off and VP cancel. Yakinder will fall off and he rotates mid and leaves Jame solo to off ramp. Jame gets a kill and Yakinder rotates back however he is so aggressive that he pushes through the A smokes and he gets into short where he is in a bad position. He is stranded on an island having to watch his back as well as players pushing up ramp as Jame is smoked off and can't help him. Yakinder is going to get killed. This was a bad play from Yakinder. These type of deaths put the other team back into the round. He needs to learn how to turn his aggressiveness down at times in my opinion. When his aggressiveness works, it looks good and he puts his team in a good position to win but when it doesn't, it's very detrimental to the team. That's the pros and cons of Yakinder's playstyle and you have to take the good with the bad. The reason why you play 3A I forgot to mention before is that you're really focusing on contesting ramp control and when you're playing 2A you can still contest ramp but you're putting more of an emphasis on mid and B which leads into the next segment is sometimes Yakinder will solo ramp at the start. His teammates will throw the deep ramp smoke and they'll be focusing on mid and B which here in this round Jame and Flit were mid and they get a kill. Gambit knowing this will contest ramp which instantly after getting the mid kill his teammates rotate to A to help contest ramp. Yakinder even if he is solo ramp still plays how he would usually play, flashing ramp early on and peeking it. Yakinder solo ramp once again with VP going to a mid stack. We see him do this standard routine once again with the ramp flash and peeking from platform. Shiro throws a delayed ramp smoke which allows him to cross the yellow. Yakinder falls back to flash and re-peaks. He sprays bottom yellow and does good damage onto Shiro. In the meantime this mid setup stack gets a kill into Hobbit and Yakinder falls off and re-smokes Ivy from Tetris. He goes and clears Ivy and then he falls into this common crane setup where he and another player are crane and one player is Tetris and they're going to flash when the T show presence ramp. Unfortunately it doesn't work out here as Kicker gets killed and Yakinder gets flashed and retreats. In the meantime Inters had lurked into B and VP go and kill him. Time runs out and VP will win the round. But the crane setup I just showed is a common mid round setup that VP like to fall into. You don't always need two players crane, sometimes your kinder will be by himself crane and he gets flashed to peak ramp. Here is a round where your kinder is solo A and his teammates are towards mid and B. Your kinder is actually going to play passive here and play retake. He throws a flash off crane and then plays sight. Buster gets a kill stairs and your kinder hearing the ramp retake nades will nade and molly ramp. Liquid are going to execute A and your kinder gets on top of Tetris and he kills Stewie. And BP are now in a 5v3 post plant retake. Unfortunately for them they make the mistake of having someone defuse right away which is not needed when they have plenty of time left. I would recommend fake defusing 
which will draw the sprays from the tees as well as them pushing up out of their positions. VP should have won this retake and this is something I would like to see more incorporated in Yakiner's play which is being more passive, playing more retake, but I don't think that's going to happen. Another favorite setup from VP in Yakinder is the one where he's jiggle peeking Crane with a smoke out and James has an off watching Ivy. When contact is made and or an execute is happening, Yakinder will underhand the smoke to his left, blocking off vision from the tees when they entry up from ramp. James gets mollied and pushed back, so Yakinder helps him out and kills Mopez. Then he immediately turns his attention to sight because the tees can jump onto default to peek short. The smoke fades and he gets one kill before being traded. The sandbag position can be a very strong angle for CTs to play because if the tees don't use any utility to clear it out, it hardly gets checked by the tees when they entry up ramp due to their main focus being on sight. Yakinder went for the platform peak early on and he spots the smoke as well as hearing the flash. He falls back and he throws ramp nades. He plays sight afterwards, however decides to regress and gets the sandbags. Fast forward late into the round, the flames decide to hit A, however they don't clear sandbags with any nades. Yakinder peeks and works the angles around the sandbags and ends up with a nice 3k. If the T's do molly sandbags, then make sure if you're playing this position, you have a smoke to put it out, which Yakinder does here versus G2. There's a couple of ways to go around when you get mollied off. In this clip here, Yakinder will get back on the rail after smoking out the molly, and then he kills Omnak. He gets flashed and tucks back into sandbags. His teammates are there to watch the cross from G2. Nico is fighting his teammates in A and Yakinder swings off the contact and kills Nexa. You have a time limit when playing sandbags because the T's can wait for your smoke to fade before throwing another molly and or they can nade you. So it's preferred that you get help from your teammates to flash for you to either fight and or to fall back, which happens here with Yakinder retreating from his teammates flash. One characteristic you must have when playing sandbags is trigger discipline. This comes into play when teams take a risk and don't clear sandbags, which happens in this clip here. Vitaly chooses a gamble that no one is playing there, which Yakinder is. However, Yakinder had multiple chances to multi-frag and chooses the safest option here, which is killing the bomb planter. However, afterwards, there was no one else and he gets killed when peeking to his left into a double peek. Unfortunately for VP, Team Vitaly are going to win this 2v4. To wrap up, I showed how Yakinder placed ramp and A site on CT side Vertigo. I covered his common peaks and plays, as well as some setups and protocols that his team likes to use. Yakinder's aggressive playstyle on Vertigo, A ramp and site, has his pros and cons. Pros being that he gets a lot of info, fast flanks, opening kills, setting up his team with an early advantage. However, downside is he has a lot of debts setting up his team in an early disadvantage or giving up that advantage. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to see more content like this. Like the video and comment on who you want to see next and or positions and maps. Till next time, Nardark here. Peace.